My name is Ilana Bell, and I'm going to read a poem by Anne Sexton for John, who begs me not to inquire further. Not that it was beautiful, but that, in the end, there was a certain sense of order there, something worth learning in that narrow diary of my mind, in the common places of the asylum where the cracked mirror or my own selfish death outstared me. And if I tried to give you something else, something outside of myself, you would not know that the worst of anyone can be finally an accident of hope. I tapped my own head. It was glass, an inverted bowl. It is a small thing to rage in your own bowl. At first, it was private. Then, it was more than myself. It was you, or your house, or your kitchen. And if you turn away because there is no lesson here, I will hold my awkward bowl with all its cracked stars shining like a complicated lie and fasten a new skin around it as if I were dressing an orange or a strange sun. Not that it was beautiful, but that I found some order there. There ought to be something special for someone in this kind of hope. This is something I would never find in a lovelier place, my dear. Although your fear is anyone's fear, like an invisible veil between us all. And sometimes in private, my kitchen, your kitchen, my face, your face. Um, so that is the first poem that I read where I felt like, aha, there's a place for me in poetry. There's somebody who sees me, who's talking to me from beyond the grave or whatever, um, and talking right to me. Um, I was just so struck by that idea of like looking into your own darkness, that there's value in your darkness, and that what can come out of that can be a gift um, for yourself and ultimately as frightening as it is for the people who have the opportunity um, to encounter it in this crystallized, um, elevated form. And in that form that there's actually light in the darkness. Uh, so I'm going to read a poem of my own um, called Your Village. Your village. Once, in a village that is burning, because a village is always somewhere burning. And if you do not look, because it is not your village, it is still your village. And that village is a hollow child. You drown when he looks at you with his black, black, eyes. And if you do not cry because he is not your child, he is still your child. All the animals that could run away have run away. The trapped ones make an orchestra of their hunger. The houses are ruined. Nothing grows in the garden. The grandfather's grave is there. A small stone under the shade of a charred oak. Who will brush off the dead leaves? Who will call his name for morning prayer? Where will they, the ones who slept in this house and ate from this dirt? So my question is, 
What do you believe in as a person? And how does that drive or inform or complicate your life as a poet? So, um, at the risk of being corny <laughs> and um, idealistic, which I am accused of often, whether out loud or in people's heads, I feel like. Uh, what I believe in as a person is that everybody has a story, um, everybody has a narrative, and that everybody's narrative is unique um, and infinitely valuable and worthy of being heard and being seen. And here's the hard part, that nobody's narrative is actually more valuable than somebody else's. Even though, well, we're in our own bodies, um, which are sort of the microcosm of what it is to be in a country or in a nation or in an ethnicity, a race, a class, like all of these categories are sort of these bodies that separate us. Um, and it's hard when you're in that body to feel you want to hold on to your narrative and to your belief and that it is the most valuable and important and true thing. And if poetry um, has taught me anything, hearing the poetry of others, which is really another way of saying their stories and their truths, I have been so opened and so exposed and so shaken and um, shifted by hearing the truths um, of other people, even when they are so uncomfortable for me, even when they challenge my own stories and beliefs. Um, they are so true, and, um, and every time I've had the opportunity to um, stand in the discomfort, um, my life is actually almost always exponentially expanded and enriched and better, and therefore my poetry um, is expanded and enriched and better. Um, and I think it works both ways, so I actually feel like um, because I believe, and because I believe that about people's narratives, I believe uh, that bridges can be built between people that only make the space and the time and give the value to each other's narratives and really just to listen and not to try to insert our own story in that, although it's tempting and sometimes that's also valuable, but to just hear and listen and, and honor each other's stories and truths, whether it's through poems or through just the lives that we have. Um, I think that the poetry that we cre I create out of that, um, and the poetry I've heard out of that space, um, has the possibility to shift the world and shift the planet. I'm totally roundabout in my speaking, but, um, and it's complicated because it's uncomfortable. Um, because it forces me personally to um, A, have to be in a place of hope and belief, which is vulnerable and painful in the world we live in sometimes. Um, and then to have those that hope, it's so easy for people to wanna, like the hope and possibility that I have in poetry as a bridge and in just our ability to honor each other's narratives and stories as, as a bridge that can create a lot of healing. Um, I think people wanna crush that, but I think we have a really, amazing political example of that actually uh, with the Truth and Reconciliation Committee in, uh, in South Africa that they decided, this is like, it blows me away every time I think about it, that they were like, you know what? Rather than get those motherfuckers who like c committed the most heinous crimes, we would rather have them tell the story so that we have a record and that we can be like, this happened. And by them saying that this happened by our enemy or our other telling what happened and like then we can, our healing is more possible. Um, and so I think that it's really true. Um, I hope I've answered the question. I feel like I've gone round and round, but that's my belief as a person. It complicates my life and my poetry, but I think ultimately um, it's the vision that I have for the planet. And, and my deepest secret, not secret hope, I'll just say it right now, is that, um, yeah, I fucking want poetry to like open people up and soften them and 
make them believe in possibilities that they hadn't considered before.